Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be he sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places, and my acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but, O oh Lord, know it's all together. You press upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, and is, too, and is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from the, your spirit? Where can I go, where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make it the grave of my bed, you are there also. If I take two, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, your right hand will hold me fast. 
If I say, surely the darkness will come over me, will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O Lord, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look me, look well whenever there be any wickedness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will ever for, and will be forever. Amen. First reading in the book of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay it down in, the pla in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on earth, the top of it reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, I am the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and your offspring. Know that I am with you, and you will keep you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to the land, to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is this place, and I do did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called this place Bethel. This is the word of the Lord. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show his mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to have set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. 
to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Second reading from Letter to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you, will, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subject to fertility, not of its own will, but by the will of the ones who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. Not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved, now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we, do, what we did not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, of apostles praise you the noble fellowship of prophets praise you the white robed army of martyrs praise you throughout the world the holy church acclaims you father of majesty unbounded your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be a judge. 
Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and brings us with your saints to glory everlasting. Our gospel portion this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 13. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. <coughs> the kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the household came and said to him, Master, did you not plant good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? And he answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then what do you want us to do? Do you want us to go and gather them? And he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you will uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. And Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. Jesus answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers and will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we continue in the Old Testament portions to read the story of Abraham and Isaac, and now we have begun to encounter the next generation. Isaac and Rachel had two sons, twins, is according to the story. Esau is the firstborn and Jacob is second. And from the beginning, it was a contentious and vigorous relationship. Esau was an out-of-doors person, not so with Jacob. Some, reading this story, understand it to mean that Jacob is never happy because he's number two, and he wants to be number one. So, with help from his mother, Rachel, he manages to displace Esau by deceit and by taking advantage of Esau's rather lackadaisical attitude towards the fact that he has been the firstborn. Most of this is not on the up and up. 
When we begin the reading today, we, Jacob is on the run. Finally, Esau has become so infuriated with his brother that he is determined he's going to kill him. So Jacob is running. And the place he is running to is his uncle, Laban. But at the end of the day, he makes camp and he sets a stone for his pillow and sleeps. During his sleep, he has a dream or a vision. Jacob is visited by God. Some promises are made to Jacob and the generations that will follow after him. God says, among other things, I will be with you and will not leave you until all this has been achieved. Jacob is filled with awe, holy fear, and names the place Bethel, the house of God. The last words of the psalm today are words that apply to Jacob and should be understood to apply to us in the present moment. Jacob's response to God could very well have been, and in the words of the psalmist were, lead me and knit my heart to you in the way that is everlasting. <clears throat> when we turn to the gospel this morning, we find another parable leading after, coming right after rather, the parable of the seeds and the soils, which was last week. This time, an enemy plants weeds among the good seed, which is the wheat. And what shall we do in response to this? Say the servants, they come to the landowner and say, this is what's happening. Should we remove the weeds? And he says, no, let them grow together until the time of harvest. And then we will separate the wheat from the weeds. Then we will keep the grain and burn the weeds. It's a sign of the last judgment as Jesus himself says as he interprets the parable to the disciples. Beyond that, you and I are the field in which the seed of God, the word of God has been planted. And the enemy is constantly walking among us, as Peter says, like a ravening lion seeking whom he may to devour. So the enemy, the devil, is always in our midst and always seeking to crowd out the good, the stuff of God, and substitute the evil, the weeds, instead of God's goodness. The enemy calls us to seek security ahead of almost everything else and subsequently to resolve every problem that we might encounter with control and power and even violence. It's the kind of thing we encounter from time to time. I will not wear a mask and you cannot make me. That's the kind of non-compassionate behavior that stems from the evil one. This is not the way of Jesus. The enemy would have us dissent from Jesus teaching and leading and example. Don't go that way, he says. If you do, you're a wimp. If you do, you're soft in the head. You're a weakling, maybe a liberal, whatever that means this week. Never know for sure. 
We are inclined in many cases to think that we can solve our problems with technology. Although it seems to me that Rachel Carlson's Silent Spring book should have alerted us to the false promises of better living through chemistry. Oh, do the drone attacks and killings in Yemen or in Somalia make you feel safer? I don't. The funds we spend on our military hardware and standing military forces could very well be better spent on health care for everyone and good educational systems for everyone. But the caissons keep rolling along and more are built every day and it does provide at least a veneer of safety and security. Another response that we commonly make to our anxieties and our search for security is what's gotten to be known as consumerism. The ads on television, radio, in the print media, and everywhere else seek to persuade us that this item, this product, will make us content and secure. And we constantly discover when we have that item that we are not content and we're certainly not secure. Switching brands or buying a new item regularly leaves us just about where we were, although our wallet is a little lighter. So generally speaking, we are not happy. We are not secure, either through technology or militarism or consumerism. What should we do instead? We should heed the words of the psalm and allow ourselves indeed seek to be knit to God and to God's purposes. Who are we? Whose are we? We are the children of God, the children of light, redeemed and loved by God. We are to be the agents of God's healing and reconciliation. We are to be the living witnesses to what, has, what God has done in and through Jesus to save humanity from the enemy who sows bad seed. There will be difficult times. It will be hard. It will be tough sometimes as we go forward. But we know and we can affirm that nothing in all of creation is able to cut us off from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Holy Spirit is our gift in baptism when we died with Christ and were raised to new life in Christ. The Holy Spirit enables us, leads us, secures us, and allows us to be beacons of light, people of hope, evidence of God's wholeness in this world, today, tomorrow, and every day we have. Be patient, wait, serve God, serve one another. It's what we are called to be and to do. Let us pray. Holy God, you nurture us every day and we give you thanks. Enable us by your spirit dwelling within us to share your light and love with everyone that we meet, that they too may know your saving and healing power. 
grant this all, grant us all, finally, to be gathered into your granary at the end of the age. We pray through Jesus, our great Redeemer. Amen. Let us recite the articles of our baptismal faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. A colic for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A colic for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this week, this day, such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold and pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. litany for healing. Let us pray for the Lord's help and healing for ourselves, for others, and for all of God's creation. We pray for all who worship God throughout the world, all who share the gospel, all who seek God's truth, and all who work for peace, that God's healing love may touch the lives of all people. We pray for reconciliation among peoples and nations. Replace our ignorance and fear, our anger and greed with understanding, restraint, and compassion. Help us see all people as your beloved children for whom Christ died and rose again. We pray for healing for the brokenness in the world, especially in these times of pandemics of racism and the coronavirus. We pray for forgiveness of all our sins. Help us reach out to others to ask their forgiveness and to offer them our forgiveness, that we all may be reconciled in your love. 
We pray for healing for all who are suffering from any kind of illness of mind, body, or spirit. Healing for ourselves and for those we now name before you in our hearts. We pray for wisdom, skill, and compassion for those who care for others in need, that they may be encouraged by your love for them. We pray for all throughout the world who are seeking ways to prevent and cure the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for all who are confused or afraid, anxious or sorrowful, that they may find comfort and hope in your presence and in the presence of those gathered around them. We pray for relief for those who are suffering and in pain. We pray for your comfort for those who are dying. We pray for solace for those who are grieving. Strengthen our trust in your merciful love. We pray for all who have died that they may find welcome in your kingdom. May we who mourn them know in our hearts and proclaim in our lives the promise and hope of Christ's resurrection. Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're following along at home in your prayer books, we will now come to the General Thanksgiving, page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercy, we, your unworthy servants, do give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercy that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through jesus christ our lord to whom with you and the holy spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages amen and the prayer of saint john chrysostom almighty god You've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter all darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you now and always. <laughs>